Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to a brand new tutorial series on how to create your own Minecraft mod for 1.16.4 using the Fabric API. Now in this series, we'll be covering everything from the basics like custom items and blocks, all the way up to more advanced concepts like crops, mobs, and maybe even dimensions and portals. Now in this episode, we're just gonna be setting up our workspace and downloading some important pieces of software so that we can get started with coding in the second episode. Now, first thing you wanna do is go to the description of this video and click on the first link in the description, and that will take you to the first website we need to visit, which is the Adopt OpenJDK website. And this will allow you to download the Java Development Kit 8. Now, this is what's gonna allow us obviously to develop our mod in Java, and I highly recommend selecting JDK 8. You can use other versions with Fabric, but it'll make it a lot harder for people to download and use your mod for their fabric version. So I highly recommend selecting OpenJDK 8 here and Hotspot, and we can just download latest release. Now I already have this downloaded to my desktop for ease of access, but you wanna take this OpenJDK 8 installer here, double click it, and you will get a install wizard. Hit next, read through the license agreement, hit I accept the terms in the license agreement, hit next. Now this page is very important. What you wanna do is come over to set Java home variable and you wanna click on this red X and you wanna click entire feature will be installed on local hard drive. Uh, you should see it should change to a little hard drive symbol. And then you also wanna to go to the Java Soft Oracle registry keys here. And you want to again, select the red X, entire feature will be installed on local hard drive. Uh, setting this here uh, to this option uh, by setting the Java home variable, it will allow us to actually build our project with Gradle. And by uh, setting these keys here, we will actually be able to run Fabric EXEs. So you wanna hit next and you can just hit install. And this will start, uh, you'll get a little pop up here as well. You can hit yes, but this will install adopt open JDK and it should take just a couple seconds. It's usually really, really fast. Uh, so I will just wait here for a second and there we go. So you can hit finish and we now have uh, JDK installed on our computer. So we can throw away this installer. All right, so the next thing that we need is an integrated development environment, also known as an IDE, in order to actually edit our code. So what you wanna do is go to the second link in the description, and that will take you to the IntelliJ download page. And you wanna download the community edition here because it is free, you don't need to buy the ultimate edition, it's not necessary. So just download the community edition here, uh, and you can hit download, and it will download to your computer. Uh, and I already have it here on my desktop. And just a reminder that you are welcome to use Microsoft Visual Studio or Eclipse. Either of those will work fine. However, I personally like IntelliJ the most, so that is what I'll be using for this series. But once you have it on your desktop, you can double click the uh, installer here and uh, you will get a pop-up, hit yes. And in this install wizard, just hit next. Choose your destination folder, hit next. Now this next window, you can leave everything unchecked. However, I highly recommend selecting the 64-bit launcher. That way you get one on your desktop so we can uh, use it really easily. Hit next and install. Now this process will take a couple minutes, so I will be right back when it's done installing. All right, so as you can see, the setup has been completed and we can just hit finish. Now you will get this little launcher on your desktop. Of course, I already have it on my desktop because I use IntelliJ all the time, but uh, you will wanna keep this on your desktop. I'm just gonna throw it away because I already have it. Uh, but yeah, definitely keep that, it's important. And uh, we can throw away our uh, installer as well. Now for the next two pieces of software, they are optional, but I highly recommend you download them. And I'm not gonna show you how to download them because they're very easy, simple installs. But the first thing that I highly recommend you download is Notepad++. And this is because we will be editing some files from our desktop and the default Windows text editor is really poor for this purpose. So definitely download Notepad++ if you can. And I also highly recommend getting some sort of WinRAR or 7-zip application so that you can open up uh, zip and .rar files. Um, I'm gonna use WinRAR for this tutorial, but you can always use 7-zip if you would like. Just uh, if you're downloading WinRAR, uh, just come here to this website and click the 64-bit version uh, or whatever version you have for your computer. So yeah, highly recommend these two pieces of software. Now that we have all the software that we need downloaded to our computer, we can now get started making our mod. So if you go to the description and go to the next link, 
link. This will take you now to the Fabric Example Mod template, and this is by the official Fabric MC team. And this is a template of your mod that you can essentially just download to your computer and edit as necessary. And it's really simple to just get started. So there's a couple ways that you can uh, go about this. You can either use this template if you wanna make your own repository. You can uh, clone this repository to your desktop using Git. And you can also download the files in a zip file. So just to make this really simple for everyone, I'm just going to click on code and hit download zip file to download the files to my computer and they should be on our desktop here, Fabric Example Mod Master. And again, you will have to use 7-Zip or WinRAR to open this, but you can double click this. And inside of here, you should find a folder. You can just drag that to your desktop and we can get rid of this 7-Zip uh, folder. So in this folder, it should be called Fabric Example Mod Master. You can double click this. This is the template of our mod. And we just need to customize a few properties inside of here, but we'll do that in a bit. So what you wanna do first is rename this uh, folder here. So right click rename to the name of your mod. So in my case, I'm gonna be naming this Fabric Tutorial. Uh, another way that you could name the, this folder is you could have every space in your mod name be a dash. So you could do Fabric dash tutorial, something like that but uh, I am going to be using this format. So fabric tutorial. Oh, accidentally added a semicolon there. There we go. So the name of your mod and we need a place to put this. So we're gonna make on our desktop a new folder and we're just gonna name this Minecraft modding. And we can drag this over here and you wanna just drag your mod folder into the Minecraft modding folder. And it should be in there. And uh, this will allow us to have multiple modding projects um, you know, and be able to open them separately in IntelliJ whenever you want. Now, before we open this project in IntelliJ, we want to actually go into our mod folder here and we need to make sure that the gradle.properties is fully updated. So what you can do is right click on gradle.properties and if you have a notepad plus plus, like I recommended you install earlier, you can edit it with that or you can just open it with another text editor. So I'm going to edit with notepad plus plus. And you can see here uh, that we have a few options that we can edit. So first is the memory available to Gradle. If you have some extra RAM on your computer, you're welcome to increase this, though you can totally leave it to one gigabyte if you want. Uh, but I'm gonna set this to two, just so it builds our project a little bit faster. Uh, you also wanna make sure that your fabric properties and dependencies are fully up to date. Now there's a fantastic website in the description of this video that you can go to called Fabric Latest Versions. And what this will do is allow you to select whatever Minecraft version you are making your mod for, in my case, 1.16.4. And as you can see, it will give you the most up-to-date Gradle properties for that version. So uh, as you can see here, our Gradle properties, or our fabric properties rather, and dependencies are actually a little bit out of date. So what we can do is select 1.16.4 and we can copy these Gradle.properties here, copy, and we can just paste them in and you can move them over. There we go. So we have now the most up-to-date fabric properties. And of course, we also need to set our dependencies to the most up-to-date. So we can copy that down here and we can paste it in for our dependencies. There we go, save. And now we have the most up-to-date fabric properties and dependencies. Now, the last thing you wanna do in here is change your mod properties. So this is gonna be custom to your mod. So for the mod version, this is whatever you know version you want your mod to be when it's released. Mine is just gonna be 1.0.0, that's pretty standard. For the Maven group, this is going to be your package presentation up to your main class. So what I highly recommend and what most uh, developers do is com dot, the name of you as a developer. So Technovision in my case dot and then the name of your mod. So in this case, tutorial. So yeah, com dot the name of you as a developer dot the name of your mod. And then for the archives base name, uh, you can pretty much just type your, uh, your mod name and then separate each space with a dash. So in my case, tutorial dash mod. And there we go, we can save. And that is our gradle.properties all set to go. So now we can finally open up our project in IntelliJ. And in order to do that, we wanna close out of here Go to IntelliJ, double click on your desktop, and it will open up a little welcome screen. What you wanna do is hit open an existing project, go to your main drive, users, the name of your computer, go to desktop, and go to Minecraft modding. And you should see your mod folder here. Again, mine is named Fabric Tutorial. And you wanna click on the build.gradle. It should be a little elephant icon there, and you wanna hit okay. 
and then you want to hit open as project. This will start importing your project and building it with Gradle. Now this can take a while. It can take anywhere from a couple seconds to a couple minutes and sometimes even an hour depending on your computer. So I'm going to let this run. You will know that it's done when you see a green check here under the sink and when there are no more uh, things indexing in this little bar. So as you can see, our Gradle build was successful. It took about a minute and 40 seconds, and you'll have a couple minutes additional of uh, indexing in the bottom right corner here. And we can close out of here. Now, if you go to your source folder, you should see a main Java and resources folder. Now in your Java folder is where all of the code will be and we'll, where we'll be adding code over time. And the resources folder is where we're going to be adding stuff like our assets, our models, as well as editing our fabric JSON and mod ID uh, mixins JSON. So what you wanna do, you'll notice right away that uh, these packages are bunched up. To fix that, come over to the gear icon and you want to uncheck compact middle package Packages. This will make sure that everything is spread out really nice. You can see everything. And if you open up example mod, we actually have a uh, mod all set to go in here, but we will be deleting this in a second just so we can rename all of the packages. Now, very important, you want to make sure you come up to this little elephant icon. It should say load Gradle changes. Make sure you click it. It'll have a little blue circle and, a, and an elephant. Hit click on that and it will actually uh, configure some additional settings uh, that the original, the initial Gradle build did not finish. So once that's done, what you can do is actually come over here. And uh, as you can see, we have all of these packages here. We want to actually delete all of them because uh, we're gonna add our own. So uh, hold shift and just highlight everything from example mod all the way up to net. And you just wanna right click and uh, delete and hit delete. And that will delete everything in the Java folder. So you should just have a Java folder that's empty. And now we're gonna add our own packages. So you want this package presentation or layout to be pretty much exactly the same as your Maven group that you set in the gradle.properties. So come over to your Java folder here, right click, create a new package, and you can pretty much just do exactly what you put for your Maven group. So again, you want com dot the name of you as a developer or your organization. So technovision dot, and then the name of your project minus tutorial. And then again, you can separate each new space in your project name with a period. So you could put, if you wanted like industrial dot craft dot mod, something like that. Uh, but mine is going to be tutorial. And inside of your final package here, now that we've created our, our three packages, we can right click, create a new Java class. And this is going to be your main class. So you can name it essentially the name of your mod. So mine is going to be tutorial. And you wanna make sure first thing that this class implements an interface called mod initializer. And IntelliJ will initially uh, complain and say that you haven't uh, implemented the necessary methods. So hover over this error, click implement methods, and you wanna implement the on initialize method. This will make sure we override it. And now we have a somewhat functional mod. And pretty much over time, we're gonna be adding stuff to this on initialize method, but you can keep it empty for right now. So the last thing we have to do is actually edit our fabric.mod.json and maybe some things in our assets folder. So come over to your fabric.mod.json and uh, there's a few things that we definitely need to edit in here. So first thing is your mod ID. This is very important. It, you can think of your mod ID sort of like a, a short string or a series of characters that represents your mod. It has to be unique and it's what essentially allows Fabric to load multiple mods with the same items uh, into one single game or client. So again, you want this to be short, all lowercase, and unique to your mod. Uh, one thing I recommend, like if you have, if for example, you were doing industrial crafts as your mod, uh, you could uh, make your mod ID IC for industrial crafts. Uh, or you could put for like a witchery mod, you could put witch. So something very short that represents your mod. Mine is going to be tutorial. Uh, yeah, so make sure it's uh, unique and all lowercase. Uh, you can leave version how it is, or you can add your own version if you would like. Uh, for the name, this is just a name for your project. So mine is gonna be tutorial mod. Um, you can include spaces here, of course, so just so you know. And then for description, again, you can also include spaces, just a description of your mod. So I'm gonna put an example mod for my YouTube series. All right, and then we can also add authors. So you definitely wanna add yourself as an author. I'm going to put Technovision. 
And then you can add additional author, authors uh, if you want by adding a comma and then a new entry. And you can just add a new, uh, a new author, like for example, Sparky MC. Uh, but I'm just going to have one author. So just me and Technovision. You can also add a homepage if you have a website for your project or your mod. Uh, I do not have a website for this mod, so I'm just going to uh, leave this blank. Uh, and then for sources, you can also add a GitHub if you would like. I will do this later, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave this blank. So if you don't have a GitHub or a homepage for your project, you can just leave these blank. Okay, so next is the license, and uh, I will leave a really great resource in the description of this video on all of the different license types. You can actually check that out right now, and it will not only show you the name of the license, but also the keyword. And so if you find a license that you like, you can just copy the keyword and just paste it right in here for the, uh, the license. Now I will be using the Creative Commons Zero Universal License because this is a, uh, an open source project and I want you guys to be able to copy it however you want. So I will be using that license, but of course you can use whatever license you want and I highly recommend you look into them yourself. For the icon, this is going to be in your assets mod ID folder. Uh, the icon PNG, the standard one, is just gonna say mod ID. It's a placeholder, but you can add your own if you would like. It's not necessary, but I would highly recommend that. But what we do need to do is actually right click with this mod ID folder here, refactor, rename, and you wanna rename it to exactly what you set your mod ID up here. So again, very important that you remember this. We'll be using it a ton in the future. So in my case, my ID, my mod ID is tutorial, so tutorial refactor and so yeah so now you should have an assets the name your mod id folder and then the icon.png in there and again you can replace this icon.png with your own custom icon if you would like or you can leave it up to you uh, you do want to change though this pathway you want to change mod id to your mod id so again we can copy our mod id and just paste it in uh, so you can see this is essentially telling fabric that your icon is located uh, right here all right, next is the uh, the main class. So this is going to be the uh, the pathway to your main class. This is no longer valid, so we can delete this. And uh, you can see our pathway is com.technovision.tutorial.tutorial. So that is what we're gonna put here. So again, it's this, this is the pathway to your main class. So in my case, com.technovision.tutorial. And then the name of our class uh, that has the uh, the mod initializer in it. So capital T and tutorial. And again, you're capitalizing the first letter in this word because this is a class, not a package. Now for mixins, we're gonna be talking about this in another episode. So for right now, you can just delete this line and we will be coming back to this later on. Uh, so do, do not worry about that. Mixins are a little bit more complicated. All right, so now that this is done, we can file, save all, now all we have to do is just generate our sources and then we can run the game. So in order to generate your sources, you wanna come up to view, go to tool windows, go to terminal, and inside of terminal, you want to type gradlu space and then gen source. Just like that, and if you would enter, this will start generating the source and this can take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple minutes. So I will be right back when it's done. All right, so as you can see, it says build successful in 48 seconds. So it did work. And now we have our source and so we can actually run the game. So in order to run the game, you wanna come up to add configuration and you want to find application here and you should see a Minecraft client and a Minecraft server. Uh, this will allow you to run obviously a Minecraft client and a Minecraft server if you want. We are gonna click on Minecraft client, hit okay. And every time you wanna run the game to test out your mod, you can just click this green triangle and it will launch the game with your mod installed. Now, if you cannot find this Minecraft client, it should automatically be in there, but if you cannot find it, you can always go to view, tool windows, terminal, and you can type in gradlu uh, ID, ID, I believe is the, the command. So you can always type in that and it should download the, uh, the run environment for you, but I'm pretty sure it already has it preset. So click on my Minecraft client, hit the green triangle, and we're gonna make sure that our mod is working. All right, so we can see the game is loaded. It's for 1.16.4 fabric. And if we look in our console here, you can see that there are no major errors present, which means that everything is working great and we are ready to actually get started modding in our next episode. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks guys so much for watching. I know it was super boring just sort of setting up your workspace, but in the next episode, we will actually get started coding and making our first custom item. And make sure to check out our Discord in the description if you need any help with your setup or your code, and we will be sure to try and help you out. Otherwise, thanks guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.